Hi everyone, welcome to this new part where we will be sharing our character still with my cat on the back. <laughs> he loves the lockdown, I think. Alright, let's go. For this project, we will be using cycles. I will switch to GPU compute for better performances. If you go in your preferences in the system tab option, you will see if you have CUDA available or even optics if you are using RTX technology. GPU compute is generally 10 times faster than CPU compute, so I truly advise you to use it. Pressing the Z key in the 3D viewport will open us the shading menu. I will switch to rendered. And what we see now is a mix of our world color, which is a solid gray, and the ambient occlusion. So the idea is that our scene is lightened by a grayish color that is homogeneous all around our character. And the only shadows that we are seeing are automatically generated and are the AO, or ambient occlusion. Instead of using lamps to light our scene, we can use an HDRI image. And I truly advise you to go to HDRI Heaven. I always use their HDRI. This is one of the best websites and resources in the world for me. I often use the Kara Down HDRI because I love the tune, but you can use whatever HDRI you want. I've provided the specific HDRI in the course file. Greg Zal from the HDRI Heaven provides those under a Creative Commons license so you can use it even for commercial projects. Please consider supporting them through their Patreon. If I was to explain simply what those environment textures are, these pictures can be wrapped onto a sphere, meaning that you can watch them at a 360 degree angle and they have a very high bit depth, meaning that you can record into these pictures color information, but also values information, meaning light. The sun in this picture will currently project light into your scene. The first thing I've done is to replace my outline window by a new 3D view. Then with the Ctrl B shortcut, I will drag a window where I will limit the render area. The smaller this area, the faster will be the rendering. I've also previously opened a shader editor window and I will switch from object to world. Then make sure that the use node checkbox is enabled. This will allow you to get access to the world nodes. Whenever we are working with node editing, we always use the node Wrangler add-on. So go to the add-on tab, search for Wrangler and activate it. Then select the environment node and press Ctrl T it will create a texture setup for you. And then in the environment texture option, click the little folder and go to search for your HDRI. Now you can see in the right window that my background is no longer grayish, but instead I can see the picture we have downloaded. If we play with the mapping node values, we can change the coordinate of the texture. By modifying the Z rotation value, I will be able to rotate the world around my character until I get a directional lightning from the left. So you will see that the right part of the character is in the shadow now. From there, I will switch back to object, select my Game Boy character and create a new material that I will name plastic. If we now play with the base color of our shader, we will see our Game Boy changing color. If we play with the specular value, we will have more or less reflectivity onto the surface, while the roughness value will make the reflectivity to be more mirror-like or rougher, let's say matte. The roughness value is one of the most important value to play with to get a nice shader. To read it well, it's better to keep a dark color for your material. So I will keep this black color for the time being 
while I'm playing with the roughness. Our goal now will be to bring a bit of edging to the surface of our Game Boy by creating a bit of randomness into the roughness value. To do so, I've added a texture noise texture and I will plug this into the roughness. Thanks to the node wrangler, whenever you will control shift click a note, you will see the result. If you control shift click multiple time a single node, Blender will show you the different output of the same node. What we are currently seeing is the factor of the noise texture and you can see it's a black and white texture. What you need to know is that black has a value of 0 and white has a value of 1 or above. So we can absolutely use those grayscale to drive the roughness value. And now you can see on the surface of my Game Boy, I have this roughness variation. If I now input in between a color ramp that will allow me to play with the contrast, I will be able to get a rougher or cleaner surface. Since pure black means there is no roughness at all and we get perfect reflection, I will slightly increase the color value of the black flag in the color ramp to get dueler reflections. For me, that's enough of editing regarding this material. I will just switch back to a nearly white color. You should always avoid pure white and pure black whenever you are creating colors for your material because theoretically those colors doesn't exist in real life. I can now create a new material slot, load the plastic we have created and duplicate it so that I won't be destroying the current material. And we call this plastic black. Now we need to assign this material to other parts, such as the cross controller. You can change the preview of a material in the 3D view by switching to material view and then in the viewport display give it a color. So here I can see the difference because I haven't assigned the material to the cross. To do so I need to go into edit mode over over it and press L to select it and then click assign in the material view. Now if I make it darker and I get out of edit mode, I should see it changing color. Here it didn't work because in the overlay option I haven't set it to material. I will select the limbs object of my character and I will also assign this material by simply selecting it. You can see that the viewport color absolutely doesn't affect the render color. I need to then go into the node editor and assign a black color to the material. Now we need to create a material for the two square button. So I will create a new material this time that I will call rubber plastic or rubber black. Then in edit mode I will assign this new material to those two buttons and I will use a dark color and a pretty high roughness. This will make it look like rubber. I will also reduce the specularity since whenever a surface is very rough generally the specular value should be lower. To create the material for the red buttons I will simply duplicate the cross material then assign this new material to those buttons I will change the color to a purplish red and also decrease the roughness to make their reflectivity a bit cleaner. You will see on the reference that it seems to be made of smooth plastic and the reflectivity is cleaner, let's say. I will then duplicate this material into a new slot and assign it to the screen frame that will be in a smooth grey plastic. Then I will slightly modify the roughness and I will also slightly modify the noise value so that it's not exactly the same pattern as on the rest of the surface and it will look more natural.
when you're creating material that you want to be kind of realistic, randomness is your best friend. So manipulating those values to make some slight differences will just make your product more believable. This is the end of this video. In the next one, we will finish all the material, including the LED screen and rework the surface with the different decals. As usual, please like and subscribe and consider supporting me on my Gumroad page.